Photoshop is a great program, but it's not without its problems. And so today I present to you my top 10 troubleshooting tips. 10 troubles complete with at least 10 solutions. All right, so very briefly, here are the top 10 troubles that we'll be shooting. Starting with this guy right here, why can't I move the active layer? And understand what's going on. I want to introduce you to this composition here. It's a kind of fake, right, of a double exposure of this flying saucer. But to really seal the deal, I added this layer of grayscale. It's kind of fading the colors. And then this very essential layer of grain right here, both of which are sitting on the saucers. And so let's say I want to move one of those saucers. I'll switch to the Move tool up here at the top of the toolbox. And then you may know this trick. You can right click on the saucer, for example, to see a list of layers that might apply, and I'll choose saucer two. That's the right one, and sure enough, it's the right one. I can see that transformation boundary right there. And so I'll just go ahead and drag the saucer, and I move the grain layer instead. Why in the world did that happen? Well, Adobe, in its infinite wisdom, not only introduced this auto-select feature years and years ago, this is like decades ago, but I don't know, five or six years ago, they decided to turn it on by default. Now, I know a lot of you like this feature. I'm willing to bet most of us don't, especially for the reason I just showed you. I had to move the top layer. That's not what I want. I want to move the active layer. So I'll undo that change. I'll select Saucer 2 once again. That's the layer I want to move. And I've got to turn this guy off, auto select. That's also something you need to turn off if you're familiar with control or command dragging to get the move tool on the fly. And now notice, watch this, I can move this guy to any place I want. But what I want you to see is that in my case, I end up getting this terrible, tragic trail. And now it's disappeared, but still I don't want it. And that is trouble number two, moving a layer leaves a trail in its wake. In which case, what you do is you press Control K, Command K on the Mac. That's the easiest way to bring up the Preferences dialog box. And then you switch down here to Technology Previews. Notice this, older GPU mode, pre 2016. What Adobe wants you to believe is that this is a function of the fact you have an old GPU, an old graphics card, which you don't. Mine is a fairly recent NVIDIA card. So of course, it, it's something that Adobe should recognize. After all, NVIDIA is about what? 20 times bigger than Adobe is. However, for some reason, it's refusing to acknowledge that this card, which is totally up to date, is functioning properly, but hey, what do you do? You just turn on this checkbox, older GPU mode. And then what you have to do, because we're seeing this little info icon right there, you have to restart the software, which I have now done by the way. And because I switched back to the rectangular marquee tool, this time the saucer two layer is selected. You can see that in the layers panel. This time I'll press and hold the control key or the command key in the Mac and drag this guy to any location I like and I no longer have the trails. Now for trouble number three, why can't I switch tools by pressing a key? So let's say I want to edit some text. I'd go to the type tool, right? But notice it has a keyboard shortcut of T. All you have to do is tap the T key. And notice if I tap the T key, I'll see the I-beam for a moment, but then if I release, then I'm back to the marquee tool. So what you want to do, right, instead of pressing and holding the T key and releasing, you want to press it really fast and then release. You just want to tap it and release, but sometimes that just doesn't work. And so what I sometimes do is press and hold it and then click inside the text and then hope for the best, but then you run the risk of entering a bunch of T's, which is not what I want, so I'll undo that change. So problem is I'll, I'll, I'll type, I'll tap really fast, really fast to get to the marquee tool. And that's the problem. You're not tapping fast enough. You're kind of lagging or at least Photoshop thinks you are. So here's the trick. Here's, here's the solution, by the way, if it's just driving you nuts, you can quit the program and restart it, you know, that kind of stuff. But I'll press control K, command K on the Mac to once again, bring up preferences. And then I'll switch to tools right here. And notice down here, spring loaded tool shortcuts. And so what you want to do is you want to take this value up from 200 milliseconds just to 2000 milliseconds and see if that works. That might help you out. 
And and that way you can, in my case, it does work actually. So I can now tap the T key to get to the type tool or the M key to get back to the marquee tool. But you also want to be able to still get that thing, the spring loaded tool behavior where you press and hold the Z key, for example, click and hold and then zoom in incrementally. And then after you're done, release the Z key and you're back to the marquee tool. That's the nature of spring loaded tools. And so let me show you, I'll press control alt K this time, command option K the Mac takes you back to the last used panel inside the preferences dialog box. See that? And that would be the DEF CON maneuver. If you just cannot get it to recognize Photoshop is the it. You can't get Photoshop to recognize that you just are tapping a key to switch tools, then turn off spring loaded tool shortcuts. Problem with that though, is you just have to know that now let's say I zoom back out and I press and hold the Z key and click and hold, and then I release the Z key I'm stuck on the zoom tool. So you don't have that spring loaded behavior. So again, either you leave that on, you can turn it off, that'll definitely work. Or you can leave it on and then you can crank up this time sensitivity value to its maximum of 2000 milliseconds. At trouble number four, we have how do I bring back a missing tool? Now you'll know that you're missing a tool in Photoshop's vertical toolbox, either because you're searching for it and you can't find it, or you can click on this dot, dot, dot icon down here near the bottom of the toolbox. It might look like another tool, by the way, but if the flyout menu just reads at a toolbar, you're fine. Then you can see all the tools that Photoshop has to offer. Let me show you a different example here. I'll go up to the flyout menu icon in the top right corner of the screen and choose painting, let's say, at which point the toolbox totally changes to something very unfamiliar to those of you who are familiar with things. So not only do we have different panels on the right hand side of the screen, but we also have the blur tool followed by the smudge tool and then the sponge tool. What? Where are the dodge and burn tools, for example? Well, notice if I click on the dot, dot, dot icon to bring up the flyout menu, I can now see a list of missing tools and I can select the tool I want to use, such as the spot healing brush. How am I supposed to function without that? Or the remove tool, I've got to have those tools. Well, you can either switch to a different workspace. In fact, the one you would want to switch to is this guy right here, Essentials. So just switch back to that and you'll gain access to all your tools once again. Or you can click on, in this case, the spot healing brush. So now it's at that same location. So it's not necessarily going to appear as a dot, dot, dot. You click and hold on it and then choose the dot, dot, dot edit toolbar in order to bring up this dialog box, then click restore defaults, click done. And you once again, have access to all of your tools. Hey, real quick. Sometimes what we think is a bug, Adobe thinks is a feature like auto numbering. That's right. Photoshop has introduced auto numbering without announcing it and without any interface support. The program doesn't even support tabs and yet you can make nested lists. To learn more about it, join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash teaknow. And now, back to troubleshooting in Photoshop. Next, we have why doesn't the remove tool work? I hear folks complaining about this tool a lot, even though it's a great tool when it works. And so I'm gonna switch over to these mangoes right here. Notice that I'm working on an independent layer. And so what I'm gonna do is select the remove tool from the healing brush flyout menu. Make sure that sample all layers is turned on. That's important. And then I'll just go ahead and brush over some details right here. And a moment later, this should go fairly quickly, although you may get a progress bar. You can see that I've healed away that stuff. Now that's the way the tool is supposed to work. But let's say it crashes the program or behaves otherwise in an aberrant fashion, then press control or command K once again to bring up the preferences dialog box. This time switch over to image processing and change this option, remove tool processing to more stable. And then you can see these eyes right here. That means you have to restart Photoshop in order to make that change. So I'll just go ahead and click okay. Now, another problem that can occur is this one right here where you just get some kind of weird black and white 
artifacting, and that's most likely to occur on the Mac, especially a MacBook Pro. In which case, here are some solutions to try out, including plugging in the power cord. So go ahead and read those over. They may help. Trouble number six, why are my imported vectors jagged? And by vectors, I mean vector-based artwork from Adobe Illustrator. And so here I am inside Illustrator. I've gone ahead and selected a few objects. And now I'll go to the edit menu and choose the copy command. And then back inside Photoshop, I'll return to the edit menu and choose paste. Now either smart object or pixels is going to work for this demonstration. So I'll just go ahead and click OK, at which point I'm invited to scale the object. So I'll just Alt or Option drag one of these corner handles in order to scale from the center outward and press the Enter key in order to accept that change. Now at this point, everything looks awesome. However, if I press and hold the Z key and click and hold to zoom in, you can see that we have very jagged edges indeed. What in the world is going on here? Well, I'll zoom out just a little bit so we're not seeing that pixel grid. And then I'll go up to the edit menu and choose the free transform command, which gets us back into that sizing mode that we saw just a moment ago. Here's the problem. The anti-alias checkbox was turned off. All you need to do is turn it on up here in the options bar and then just press the enter key once again. And now you will have very smooth anti-alias transitions. All right. And here's a fun one can be a little scary actually could not complete the revert command and so notice up here in the title tab this version of the image is called please revert me important as you'll see in just a moment and there is no asterisk outside of the parentheses up here in the title tab but let's say I were to click on this layer and shift click on this one and press the backspace key delete key on the Mac I've made a huge change I just got rid of a ton of stuff and notice up here in the title tab we now have an asterisk to indicate that we have unsaved changes and I'm sitting there thinking wait a sec I didn't want to do all that I want to revert to the saved version of the image problem is while I was working, somebody took this image right here. See this image file? Please revert me once again. And they sent it to the trash can or the recycle bin. Depends on your platform. And then back in Photoshop, I go up to the file menu and choose the revert command. It's not dimmed, it's available. So I should be able to choose it, but I get this warning, could not complete the revert command. It doesn't even say why, it just gives you a space before the period. Isn't that helpful? At which point you just go, ah, and click okay. Fortunately, there's a solution and that's to find the file and bring it back. Now in my case, all I have to do is undo that change. And there is that file in its folder once again, which means that back inside Photoshop, I can now go to the file menu and choose the revert command and this time it's gonna work out just fine. Trouble number eight, why is the filter I want to use dimmed, darn it? So notice if I go to the filter menu, many of the commands are dimmed at this point. Really, they all should be dimmed, and that's because I'm working on a layer of editable type. That will not do. It needs to be a pixel-based layer or a smart object, at which point you can see now the commands are all available. They're also sensitive to the color mode. So if I go to the image menu and choose mode, all of them are compatible with RGB color. Some are not compatible with grayscale, CMYK, or lab. So that's something to bear in mind. Also, all of them are compatible with eight bits of data per pixel per channel, assuming RGB. Some are not compatible with 16 bits and some even more are not compatible with 32 bits. So that's just something to bear in mind. So consider this guy right here from the National Archives. It's an image, a stereoscopic image that was captured in 1871. Notice up here in the title tab, it is a grayscale image. That doesn't present problems for all the filters, but notice if I go to neural filters, let's say I want to colorize this guy, and I bring up neural filters, and you will see some of the commands are dimmed right here, including colorize. And so the problem is the color mode. So what you have to do is go to the image menu, choose mode, and then choose RGB color. And that way, when you return to the filter menu and once again choose Neural Filters, you will see that Colorize is available, at which point I'll just go ahead and turn it on to automatically color this image and then I'll click OK. It is not perfect. That is not the point. The point is that it will now work 
because I have converted the image to RGB. All right, here's a very odd and I would say advanced problem that you might run into. Warp transforms are not allowed. So this is an error message, an alert message that is. And let me explain what's going on here. You may recall from a few weeks ago that we explored grid-based distortions. And this is an example, this is a smart object. So if I were to go to the edit menu, choose transform and choose warp, then we could see all kinds of grid-based distortions that are going on. So highly customizable stuff. I'll just go ahead and escape out and switch to this image right here. Notice that I am a smart object. Once again, you can see that as indicated by this little page icon and I'm linked to my layer mask. And so if I were to go up to the edit menu and choose not necessarily transform warp, I'll just go ahead and choose free transform right here. I get this alert message that's saying a warp transform has been applied to the smart object. Well, that's not actually true in this case, but whatever. But warp transforms are not allowed for linked layer masks associated with smart objects. This guy's linked, so that's a problem. Please unlink the layer mask, that is, and try again. What? Why? That's so dumb, Adobe. Anyway, I'll unlink it. And now I'll go ahead and return to the edit menu and choose tr free transform, that same command, once again. And this time it's happy, no problems. And, and so the warp was the problem, right? The grid-based distortion. So I'll click on the warp icon right there. And then I'll just click on this guy, which will reset this warp. So, so it goes away. And notice nothing happened. There was no warp there, but every once in a while it can get kind of caught, like it thinks there's a warp and there's not, you know what I mean? At which point I'll just press the enter key to apply that change. And now I'll go ahead and link these two guys back together because they're still matching up in, in, in as much as they did before. And now I'll return to the edit menu and choose free transform. And this time it doesn't complain. Notice if I zoom out here, you can see that I'm working in the free transform mode. And yet somehow Photoshop is happy. And finally at number 10, we have not so much a trouble as a general solution. When in doubt, reset the preferences. Now I know a lot of you know about this one, but it's just so easy to forget. You want to keep it in the back of your mind for that day when Photoshop goes absolutely bonkers. And I wish I could tell you what that means. It's just that bonkers takes on so many varied and nuanced forms inside this software. It could be that things are just misbehaving. The program's getting sluggish. It's just not your good old pal Photoshop anymore. Then reset the preferences, but beware that is going to return the program to its factory defaults, including the positions of the various panels right here. So you want to at least, before you reset the preferences, go to the top right corner of the screen, click on this workspace icon and choose new workspace. And then just give it any old name. My workspace is just fine. Click save and that way you can come back to it any old time you want. And then you may know that there's a trick, right? You can quit the software and then restart it while jamming on a few modifier keys. Problem is it's, it's hard to remember what those keys are and it's hard to get the timing right. So what you do instead is just press Control K, Command K on the Mac to bring up the Preferences dialog box and then click on this guy right here, Reset Preferences on Quit. You'll get an alert message just to make sure you really want to do it. And the idea is if you click OK, then as soon as you quit Photoshop and then restart it, you will have reset the program to its factory defaults. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to cancel out, cancel out of here as well. But I just want to show you then what you do is go back to the workspace icon and choose that thing you saved, my workspace, and at least you'll be back in a familiar environment. Did that help? Do you want more? And don't forget to learn about Photoshop's new auto numbering. Join me at patreon.com slash deek now. And then go to deek.com and sign up for my newsletter. Not to mention right here at YouTube. Like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. I'm Deek McClellan. This is Deek Now.